What are you doing here? My ex-husband showed up at my door out of the blue. We've been divorced for five years now. He straight off demanded outrageous things. Come to my parents' funeral with me. We are going to rekindle our marriage, and I need you to be there. What the hell? What's he talking about? He keeps repeating the ridiculous statement. I gave him a dirty look and lashed out. You and I are strangers now. There's no way I'm going to attend the funeral of your parents, who are assholes just like you. My name is Paddy, and I am a 28-year-old office worker. After graduating from university, I was working hard at the company where I started my career and climbed up the ladder. My work seemed to suit me very well, and I felt more alive when I was working. But then something happened that changed my life. It was the encounter with Andy, who later became my husband. I met him through work. He worked for a client company and carried a calm and gentle air that enveloped his surroundings. I was the type to work briskly, so it was refreshing to see him work at his own pace without constraint. And yet he was able to get the job done, so I was attracted to him more and more. As we worked together, we grew closer and he eventually asked me out. He proposed to me after about a year of dating. I was so in love with him that I accepted without hesitation. Our families were elated and we had a memorable wedding. Then we went on our honeymoon trip and began our life as newlyweds. We were both working so we helped each other and shared the household chores. Andy had lived on his own since university and was able to manage cooking to some extent. I appreciated that he was capable of sharing the task with me. It allowed me to focus on my work and I was grateful for having a considerate and dependable husband. Then I got pregnant. While I was very happy to have a child, I wanted to work a little longer. I planned to take a year-long leave to focus on my baby and then return to work. Andy agreed with my proposal. Then the baby was born. She was a healthy little girl. We named her Lydia. Andy was overjoyed and his parents and I were also delighted to welcome her. After the birth, his parents frequently asked Andy and me where we would visit them again. I didn't dislike them or anything, but when they pestered us so often, I started to grow tired of them. In the meantime, Andy suggested something to me. How about we moving with my parents while you on maternity leave? Hmm? It's annoying to arrange my schedule every time we go to see them. Besides, you can have their help with housework and babysitting. I see, that's true. We were living in a rented apartment at the time, so moving out was easy. We could live with the in-laws for a year until my leave was up. They could see their grandchild and Andy also could take care of his parents. I decided to go along with the idea. He immediately asked them and they enthusiastically agreed. We got ready and moved to the house. Annie, John, thank you for letting us stay with you for a while. When I thanked my in-laws, they welcomed me with a smile and then immediately took Lydia from my arms and started playing with her. Sweet little bean, you're so adorable. Lydia was chuckling with happiness and they were so good to her. I thought I was going to spend a peaceful and enjoyable time with them. But it was only for that day. The next day, 
I was violently awakened by Annie. Betty, how long are you going to stay in bed? I hastily checked the time on my phone and saw that it was only 5 30 in the morning. Um, what's wrong, Annie? What's wrong? You're staying with us for free. I oblige you to make breakfast for the whole family. You have to pack lunch for Andy and John too. I was in shock. I didn't expect to be told such a thing all of a sudden. Andy assured me before we moved in that his parents could help me with housework and childcare. Of course, as a housewife, I was going to do my share of chores properly. I never thought that the burden would be more than when we lived by ourselves. I was half asleep when I went to the kitchen. Lydia still cried badly at night, so it was 2 am when I finally went to sleep. It was really hard for me to be up and running at 5 30 in the morning. I was moving very slowly. Annie wasn't concerned about my state and complained frantically. Why are you so slow? You're taking too long. Move faster. Oh my god, you're clumsy. So annoying. I had never seen such a frightening expression on her face before, and what she was telling me was unreasonable. In fact, it was my first time cooking in her kitchen, and I had no idea where everything was. I didn't understand why I had to be scolded by her. Then, perhaps sensing that I wasn't happy, she yelled at me again. What's that look on your face? You got a problem with me? No, it's not like that. It's just that I'm not familiar with this kitchen yet. Besides, Lydia cried a lot last night, and I had only three hours of sleep. I'd like you to consider that a little more. I tried to be as polite and down to earth as possible as I argued my case to her. She sneered and replied, I can't imagine what's gonna be like for us from now on if you're like this from day one. You're such a croak, making up excuses like that and trying to slack. I guess a woman with a half assed career has a half assed silver tongue, but it doesn't work on me. You are the daughter in law of this family. You're going to obey everything we tell you. Keep that in mind. She ordered me to finish making breakfast and lunch boxes, and then she started watching TV as she lounged on the sofa with her coffee. Soon after, Andy and John got up and sat down at the dining table. Annie also joined them, and to my surprise, she started ranting to them about how useless and bad a cook I was in front of me. John commented, That's not good. We have to educate her properly. I was disappointed in him for taking her words and for making such a statement. My in laws welcomed me and were kind to me at first, which made me hope that he would be on my side. Andy was Annie's only son, so I thought she was jealous of me taking him from her. When John also started acting cold toward me, It became clear that my in laws considered me an enemy. My daughter was still a newborn, and I was still in love with Andy, so I didn't think about divorcing him. Andy was on my side at that time, telling them, Buddy was doing her chores well at home before. I thought if he protected me, I could get by. Besides, we were only living together for a limited time while I was on leave. If I just put up with them for a little while, there would be no problem. It turned out I was naive. Their bullying became even worse. Party, hurry up and go buy the snack I asked you for. Hey, why haven't you cleaned the garden I asked you to? You're so useless. You're incompetent. 
They were unreasonable and abusive at the same time. I looked to Andy for help. Guys, don't be too hard on her. That was all he said, and went to lay on the sofa as if he had nothing to do with it anymore. I expected him to be sterner with them, but he avoided making eye contact with me. My in laws weren't persuaded to change their attitude just because their son gave them a soft warning. They continued to treat me like a slave and insulted me every chance they had. It's a shame to think that Lydia has poor genes from you. I hope Andy's side comes out stronger. I wish you would just leave Lydia with us and move out. I couldn't stand their hostility anymore. What made them think it's okay to deny my personality? They were becoming out of control, so I consulted Andy. Hun, can you do something about your parents? You need to persuade them to stop mistreating me. He frowned at me. I've been doing everything I can, haven't I? You can take care of the rest yourself. I heard you've been skipping chores at home. A neighbor even told me that it must be tough to have a lazy wife. Wait a minute, why would the neighbor say that? I don't know, she's close to my mom, so they must talk a lot. Anyway, don't humiliate me. Are you kidding me? Are you saying that is all my fault too? No, but if you'd behaved yourself, Mom and Dad wouldn't have complained. I was shocked by his comment. I can't take it anymore. No matter how hard I try, they don't approve of me. Let's just get a place for ourselves again. We've been living here for more than half a year. They must have had enough time with Lydia now. Andy simply refused my suggestion. Why not? I told them we would stay with them for a year. If we leave now, I'm breaking my promise. I don't want to hurt them. Jesus, so will you promise me that we'll move out after a few more months? Sure, I promise. I decided to endure it as best as I could for the remainder of my stay. I managed to get through five more months of hell and the promised one year was up. I immediately told Andy we were going to move out. I had even been sneaking out to view many apartments for the day. Since we could move easily, I showed him the information I got from the realtor. He scratched his head and announced something insane. You know, my parents are saying that we should just live here forever. Excuse me? So let's just stay here and not move out. Are you crazy? You promised me, didn't you? We would move out after one year. I can't believe you would break your promise. When I accused him, he snapped back. Shut up. I am your husband. You listen to what I tell you. I was stunned to see him suddenly turn red and yell at me. At the same time, my love for him instantly cooled down. Fine, I get it. Then let's get a divorce. What the hell? Divorce? Are you serious? He shouted even louder. My in-laws heard him and rushed into our room. What's going on here? You woke Lydia and she's crying now. I heard you yelling. Don't tell me this thing is giving you trouble. Who was he referring to by this thing? Their behavior seriously pissed me off, and Andy was on their side. Yeah, Dad. This thing wants to get out of here as soon as possible. It's been talking about getting a divorce. When Andy explained, they became furious at me. You're a piece of work. You really are a lousy woman. Get a divorce, Andy. She asked for it. So just get rid of her and let us take custody of Lydia. We'll be a happy family then. 
and you seem to be convinced by her. That makes sense. I haven't done anything wrong. Even if I refuse to divorce her, she's forcing me to leave. That's fine. I'll give it to you. Let's hurry up and file for it. He triumphantly declared. I got ready and went out. Then I brought the divorce papers back home. Oh, you're back. Who's that guy? Andy and his parents were puzzled looking at the man in a suit standing next to me. He's my attorney I've been consulting with for some time. I thought that maybe things would turn bad, so I've been preparing for it. When they heard the word attorney, they flinched. Why do you need him? Did you think I was going to keep quiet and let you guys get away with it? I recorded all the insults that came from Annie and John with a voice recorder and wrote about them on my blog as evidence. I also kept the records and proof that I consulted you about it. I took all this to my attorney and he assured me that I had a valid case against you all. So I'm divorcing you and taking Lydia with me. I'm also going to charge you alimony and child support for all the emotional pain and suffering you have caused me. They all turned pale listening to my declaration. They never expected me to be prepared for this. Andy seemed to understand that he was being pushed to the edge of a cliff. Right, honey. All right, I'm sorry. Let's leave this house and live happily with only the three of us. I'll do as you say. He abruptly changed his attitude, but it was already too late. You and your parents are the three of you now. You three lousy adults can live happily together. If I keep Lydia here any longer, she will be influenced by you guys. I refuse to be with the in-laws who enjoy bullying and the son who encourages it. I want you to sign the divorce papers now. He was agitated by my firm stand, but when my attorney mentioned that it will go to court if he refused, he reluctantly signed them. I was able to get custody of Lydia and get away from Andy and my in-laws at the same time. Andy was to pay alimony and child support, but my revenge did not end there. The evidence I collected was sent to nosy neighbors and Andy's boss. As a result, the unbelievable behaviors of my ex in laws spread throughout the community in no time. They were shunned by the neighbors, and Andy was scorned by his co workers. He worked hard while feeling ashamed to pay alimony and child support. Five years had quickly passed since the divorce. One day, an unexpected person showed up at my house. What are you doing here? It was Andy. I hadn't seen him once in five years as he had refused to see his daughter. So why did he suddenly show up? He straight off demanded outrageous things. Come to my parents' funeral with me. We are going to rekindle our marriage. And I need you to be there. What the hell? What in the world was he talking about? Why do I need to do that? If you do, they'll give me a little more grace period. I have no clue what you're talking about. He seemed quite impatient and started revealing what had happened since the divorce. His parents got used to making me do all the housework for a long time, and they became too lazy to do it themselves. They ended up hiring a housekeeper, but they are just an ordinary family. It was too expensive to sustain the lifestyle and yet they could not give up. So they started borrowing money from a loan shark. Andy was shunned by female co-workers at work. 
and was in agony from being unable to meet women. He tried to make a move on the housekeeper and was reported and arrested. He got fired from his job afterward and had been unemployed for a long time. In the meantime, the debts kept mounting and the entire family decided to flee in the night. John, who was driving in the middle of the night, accidentally turned the steering wheel on the mountain road and the car slid and spun around. As a result, his parents died at the scene and only he survived. He was left with a large amount of debt with additional medical bills. The debt collector found out where he was and he was in a desperate situation. He told the debt collector that he would get back together with me who was making good money and he would make me pay them back at the funeral. Of course it was none of my business and I had no obligation to help him. Please help me out. I have nobody but you now. Let's be married again, love each other and raise Lydia together. He begged me on his knees. I glared at the man who kept talking selfish nonsense. Enough! You and I are strangers now. There's no way I'm going to attend the funeral of your parents, who are assholes just like you. You made a debt on yourself. Now, get out of here before I call the police. At the mention of the word police, he panicked and walked away. I heard from an acquaintance that he disappeared after the funeral. No one knows where he went, but I don't feel sorry for him because he deserved everything he got. I'm raising my beloved daughter, who is growing up to be a sweet little girl with the best care I can give her. I'm also determined to do my best at my job and make the most of my life.